Hey everybody, I've got a great video for you today because in this video I'm going to admit that I am completely wrong about Tesla. Um, yeah, just completely, totally wrong because I've learned a bunch of things after living with this new Model 3 for even a couple of weeks that have proved to me just how wrong I am. You see, I am secretly a 90-year-old man at heart. I may look like a 26-year-old, but I, I'm a 90-year-old. I drive a 71 Volkswagen and a 72 Mercedes, and everything I own is like pre-Reagan. But Tesla has convinced me that there are other ways forward, specifically around buttons. I love buttons. I love switches and knobs and sliders, and I'm like a 3-year-old in that way with, uh, with um, you know, baby's first director set. But... Tesla has done some things which have truly blown my mind and have actually shown to me that there are other ways forward. Let's go ahead and check those out, Brendan. So this is the new uh, 2023 Tesla Model 3 Performance, but from an interior standpoint, it's pretty much the same as any other Tesla Model 3, which is to say pretty much the same as any other Tesla. And what that means from an interior standpoint is it's a very minimalist. It's kind of like stepping into an Ikea in that there are no buttons or sliders or knobs or all those things that I just said I love. Instead, what you're greeted with is this large central display, a couple of twirly knobs on the steering wheel, two stocks, and nothing else. So there are no physical controls for the climate control, no physical controls for the audio. It's all done via the screen. And Tesla, of course, is one of the pioneers of this, but just about every new car now has big screens, and uh, a trend toward fewer and fewer buttons. Because quite honestly, it's cheaper to engineer all that stuff into a screen than to have and manufacture and design little twiddly bits. And for the most part, most manufacturers don't do that so well. And some manufacturers have to actually do that so poorly it kills the reputation of the car. But I find that 99.9% um, .9 of the time I much prefer having physical controls. Especially, you know, when you're driving along you reach for the climate control, it's always in the same place. You reach for the volume knob, it's always in the same place. Um, you're, not, you're never futzing with stuff. But I really think that Tesla has nailed the system to the point where, in some ways, I don't miss volume knobs or touch controls at all. Now, there are some things I don't like about having no physical controls, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But let's talk about the things which are really good. So the first thing Tesla nailed is that there are fixed points at the bottom of the screen here, which never move. And if you want to zoom in here, Brendan, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So you've got these little controls at the bottom, which are always in the same place. And these controls are a little bit customizable, but let's show some of those things. So for example, temperature control, always in the same place for both the driver and the passenger side. And then you can, of course, open them up to see more. But the actual basic temperature control never moves. And then you've got stuff like right now, we've got the Radio controls never move. The volume control never moves. And I find for the most part, it takes just a quick glance or no glance at all to actually figure out these main controls, the temperature, the volume, and the radio controls. And that is really, really nice. Um, but it goes beyond that because when you do have to interact with the screen itself, it's very simple. The navigation system extremely intuitive and actually the controls themselves are logically laid out being able to type the keyboard and the number pad very very simple if i do need to dive into the settings it's all in list form and it's all easy to find for example if i want to change the 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 range number from percentage to miles i can do so in the display settings right there see that and now Tesla also has a new feature, this little search, where if I want to go to percentage, look, I just type purse and it pops up. So that's all exceptionally well engineered. But I want to talk about my favorite functionality, which go figure, are these two knobs here in the steering wheel. Because throughout these two knobs, I can control everything in this car without really thinking about it and without taking too much time. So this first knob on the left is primarily the volume control and then also track selection. So I can go between radio stations, I can go between various tracks via this control. This knob on the right, well, this is gonna be more of a driving control. For example, the cruise control is activated and changed via that little knob there. I shouldn't say activated, you change the speed via that little knob there. But under via a new software update, this new knob on the left 
um, does some really cool things. So I mentioned it does volume control, but if I push and hold it, if you want to look down here, Brendan, check all of this stuff out. Not only did I just open up the glove box, but look at all the things I can do from this one multifunction uh, scroll wheel. I can change the brightness, the fan speed, the temperature, all without taking my hands off the steering wheel. And that's great. You know, I talked about how it's nice not having to look down very often, but if I'm using the scroll wheel, I don't have to touch anything at all. I can even change the acceleration mode all via this one little control. And then when you're done with that, it goes back to a scroll wheel. Now that's actually a pretty recent change to the Model 3 that came in the form of a software update. And that's another thing that I think Tesla has perfected. So Tesla really pioneered the software update thing and then other manufacturers have followed in that pursuit, but not to the same extent. So every, it depends, it, you know, it might be a few days, it might be a few weeks, but you actually um, receive an over the year update, which improves the car and I find very rarely makes the car worse. So for example, that new uh, scroll wheel customization was in a recent update which came uh, not long ago, uh, but they also changed things like the controls uh, search, right? We got new gear chimes, you know, let me know when I'm in park, reverse neutral drive. And in the past, they brought things out like dog mode over the software updates and all sorts of vehicle improvements all via software updates. I remember a bunch of years ago they released one which actually made people's cars quicker for no additional cost. Now other manufacturers of course do software updates as well, but for the most part it's to fix bugs, fix little IT issues here and there. It's not really to give you new features, to give you new functionality. And that's where Tesla has just changed the world is, you know, park it at home, connect to the Wi-Fi, or even if you have the premium connectivity over the air, get a software update and now your car has gotten better which I think is pretty cool. And that's because Tesla crowdsources all this data. They know how people are using their car. They look at patterns and trends and they know that, for example, um, you know, maybe people don't like the way this function works. Maybe there's a better way to do that. And their IT people are really, really killing it. So from that standpoint, Tesla has, has nailed it. Other things that I think Tesla has nailed, and this is like a little thing, but it drives me crazy because in this job, we drive four cars a week, five cars a week. And I'm always testing out wireless chargers should have been the game changer that it never was because so often do I put my phone on a wireless charger and the phone just doesn't charge. But I find that the Tesla wireless charger, two of them here, works 100% of the time. That is such a big thing for me. I mean, I was especially, not to call anyone out, but I'm going to call out GM. Um, their wireless chargers, I have such a hard time with. This Tesla one, put it in, works every time. With, without a case, I've tried both ways on both brands and Tesla consistently works well. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is um, this new trend in the automotive industry, haptic controls. These little panels that give you little feedback, little vibrations when you touch them. Um, manufacturers recently have really moved toward haptic controls. Uh, Volkswagen really likes physical panels that don't actually actuate when you push a button, but rather slide or somehow interact digitally with the consumer. And I hate them. I just, I, I hate to say it, but I really dislike them. And uh, Cadillac, like 10, 12 years ago, had a system called Q, which was supposed to revolutionize the way that we interact with our car. It was an all haptic, you know, mystery board down the center of the car where you could swipe and push and it would vibrate and ding. And it was horrible. It really ruined the reputation for haptic controls. I was hoping forever, but now they made a return in 2023. And in my opinion, there's two ways forward. Buttons still love buttons, sliders, knobs, doodads, or what Tesla's doing, where you integrate everything into the screen, but in a simple manner. Not to say this is perfect, there's still some stuff which I think is stupid, like the to move the air vents around, you have to slide around, that's dumb. But um, the actual way that you have areas on the screen which don't move, areas on the screen which are um, fixed in place so that if you're driving around, you can just, you know, pretty quickly learn where they're at and then incorporate an easy to use UI where you don't have to navigate through a home screen all the time. That's pretty brilliant. I really think Tesla has, has uh, changed the game there. Well guys, I'm really curious to see what you think about this. Am I off my rocker? Do you agree with me? Be sure to leave me a comment in this TFL EV video. Let me know what you think with your Tesla ownership experience or your uh, Volkswagen ID4 ownership experience or your Q ownership experience. And as always, this has been Tommy. Big thank you to Brendan behind the camera. He's learning some new camera ninja skills. We'll see you in the next video.